Hello again, I am Blonty, and a little over a year ago I made a video about the MacGyvered setup I was using to Twitch stream with my 3DS using just the bits and pieces of gear I had on hand. And not too long after that, I, with the generous support of many of my viewers on Twitch, was able to obtain a specially modded 3DS XL with basically what amounts to a built-in capture device. And when it arrived, I made a video unboxing it and covering the basic functionality. And since then, it's been a terrific tool, a wonderful upgrade to the quality and production value of my Pokemon streams. Well, with Pokemon Blue, Pokemon Red and Pokemon Yellow hitting the 3DS Virtual Console, I'm planning to regularly schedule some streams for Pokemon Yellow playthrough. In fact, my entire playthrough of Yellow will be done live on Twitch. I'm keeping Blue for myself, my personal game. Anyway, because when I stream with the 3DS, I always get a few non-regulars popping in and asking about my setup, presumably because they like how it looks and want to know how I achieved it, maybe even emulate it on their own streams and such, I figured it might be useful to pop a video together to make answering those questions quick and easy, so I can just throw this link at them instead of re-explaining the whole thing over and over and over again. So, while this is not strictly speaking a full tutorial, as I won't be fully explaining every aspect of the setup, this will be sort of a basic guide or a little how-to when it comes to how I've got myself set up for Twitch streaming with the 3DS. Step number one, obtain a 3DS with a built-in capture device thingy from Katsukitty. Secondly, you've got to properly set up the software that comes with the 3DS capture kit. And just know the software is a bit janky and kind of user unfriendly and not very well polished, but it does get the job done and you don't have to fiddle with it much once you get it set up right the first time. Now, one key thing to make sure you lock in is the calibration. And again, not a full tutorial, so I'm not going to break down each of the technical details of what all of this means. And each unit is a bit different, so there's no magic combination of numbers you can just plug in that will work work for you, you just have to kind of fiddle with it trial and error style, but basically you have to calibrate both the upper and lower screens in both 2D and 3D modes separately. Failure to do so will result in screwed up and corrupted video feeds in the capture software and much frustration on your end. Elsewhere in the software, I don't tend to use the filters. They just look a bit unpleasantly fuzzy to me on the clean art style of Pokemon. In some other games, they may be more useful, but I'd rather just deal with the jagged pixels of the 3DS's low resolution. But I do sell it to 2x scale, as it's a cleaner, more efficient way to do that than asking the streaming software to scale it up or down. I also separate the upper and lower screens, because capturing each window separately makes life nicer and gives me more flexible layout options in the streaming software. I use OBS as my streaming software, by the way, and yes, I've got a video about that in more detail too. The main gameplay screen is set up with a custom overlay graphic, and to answer the common questions I get about that, no, I can't tell you where I got it from because I didn't get it from anywhere. I made it specifically for my own streams. It's not hard to make your own layout overlays for OBS, it's just a PNG file with transparent cutouts where I underlay the gameplay capture. And secondly, no, you can't have a download of it or whatever. It's mine. I made it for me, for my streams. And frankly, if you're not creative enough to make your own, in your own style, so your stream has its own unique flavor, then maybe you're not creative enough to be entertaining people on the live stream to begin with. Oh, that's harsh, I know, but come on, guys, it's true. So, make an OBS scene as you normally would and use the window capture to pull in each of the 3DS capture software's screens separately and place them under the layout graphic. Then go ahead and add in all the other bits and pieces to the scene you may want or need there. Tippers and last called Pokemon and a face cam, any of that kind of stuff. And boom, you're pretty much done. The capture software can pull in the game audio across USB 2 and output it as desktop audio, making it nice and easy for OBS to handle. And that's it. There's literally not that much to it. So long as you calibrate the software correctly and spend a bit of time crafting up a nice layout, everything else involved is just the same as streaming any other game on the PC or console via a capture device. And two more side notes of use, especially with Pokemon, which isn't that intense, of course. I tend to use a desktop cradle thingy of some kind, so I don't have to literally grip and hold up the 3DS for the whole stream. Many of my streams are quite long, so that's obviously just a comfort thing. And of course, it's the smart choice to keep your 3DS plugged into mains power while you stream. Nothing screams rookie mistake more than your 3DS dying halfway through a stream, or you suddenly leaping out of your chair to try and find your friggin' charger. So there you go. If you want to get a bit serious about streaming from the 3DS or just really, really care about the production value, the Katsukiti Capture Card thingy makes it all pretty straightforward. Not cheap, but straightforward. But if you can't afford to dive in on this pricey luxury, don't forget, you might be able to stream pretty decently already with gear you may already have lying around like I did when I first started streaming Pokemon games on the 3DS. So if you're interested, go and catch that video too. Meanwhile, thanks for watching. I am Bloody. Hope this has been useful or interesting for you, and I will catch you next time.